pretty good. Happy with the numbers that I'm seeing. Welcome once again to Tour Truck Tuesday. Taylor made the kingdom, Chris Trot, you know the drill by now. Put a couple of videos up in the last month or so about fitting tour players. And it came to me that we're talking naturally in these videos. And through that, there might be a lot of stuff that you as the viewer have got questions on. Perhaps don't put it in the comments. Go away, think about it. Think about what you can learn. By all means, always comment below. Put the bell notification on so you see the videos coming because this week's video is going to help you. It's going to define some of those numbers that I talk to the tour player about when I'm on this range. But also, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tip when you're trying to move some of these numbers because I appreciate, I love to give out a few tips on the golf swing, a few tips on equipment. You obviously are aware of that. We don't all have this beautiful facility. So there are gonna be some tips that I can throw out as I talk through the numbers. So let me start. You often see me reach for my phone. I don't use the fancy iPads and stuff. I often like my phone. It's quick, it's easy. It can go in the pocket when you're talking to the player. I've got everything on normalized. What is normalized? Well, it's when you're at sea level. We're already at sea level today. It's when the temperature's perfect. We're already perfect temperature today. It's when the wind conditions are calm. This might be into a slight breeze. So the first numbers I look at, and if I look at total, it's a six iron. Total that ball went, I've just hit the last one, 181. If I normalize, 187. So if you think about when we work with tour players, the guys I've had on here, you've heard me always early in the fitting, I'll talk about wind direction. But I want to give the player the normalized numbers so they know what those numbers are in perfect conditions. This can be a brutal range at times because it's usually into the prevailing wind if we're later in the day. It is flat sea level, so the ball doesn't quite go as far. If you're working with a player trying to give them a driver that's better than something else, or you, you just want to give them the real true numbers, be it against something they bring to compare or be it against what they have. So there's the first deal, what I'm talking about when I talk normalized. Now also keep in mind for any fitters out there, there's a lot of tiles that you can go through. When I put the little screenshot up, and I'll do it for this shot I've just hit, I generally only go with 10 tiles because I often think I can overload with information. I can overload the player. I can overload myself, the fitter, and I don't want to do that. So you can see here, spin rate. Now that six iron, I've talked about this before, only spun at 6142. I like to spin a six iron a bit more. You could argue based on the fact that it launched at 14.9 and you can go through a table when you do this and you can look at other shots, but you could argue that I maybe caught it a little higher in the blade, spin was down. For a six iron for me and the flight I want, I would want to take the number on the sole of the club and add 500. So anywhere between 6,000, 6,500, I'm happy with that. So they're there, I mean, the last three shots, 6-4, 6-6, 6-1, perfect for what I want. Why is spin rate so important? Because it impacts when we hit our golf balls, how the ball will react on the green, what the descent angle will be, but also, does the ball stall in the air and get caught in the wind? Or does it drive through the wind? Or does it not have enough spin on it to maintain its flight? So spin is all about drag and keeping the ball in the window. And the window that I might have talked about with these guys, I definitely touched on it with Jason Gore. I wanted him to hit a higher window with the right amount of spin for the speed he has. And that changes, be it if you are a junior golfer, a beginner, a lady golfer, someone who can't rotate, can't turn, needs the Golf Forever program to help their body come on. Speed, speed is what impacts what you need as a player. If you don't have the speed, your numbers are gonna be different. So you're gonna need something else to keep it in the air. And that's going to be backspin. Hence why the spin number changes for the individuals. 
Then you get into launch angle, which is the launch of this golf ball. If you've got a spin rate that is low and you have speed, then you want to launch it as high as you can in order to give you that speed, to give you that flight, to hit that optimum window. So launch is another key one that I will look at. Land angle, touched on it with an iron. It's all about how much this thing's gonna run out. With a driver, if I've got a European player who's maybe getting ready for the British Open, then I would want that thing to be flatter so it can hit the ground and run. If it comes down steeper, usually it's not gonna run as far, but it will have carried further. So again, I touched on with the players that I was fitting in the first two videos I've put up, 38 to 42 degrees on the descent angle is perfect to get that ball to run out on tall condition fairways with those players. Peak height's an obvious one. Used it very much in the Dean Wilson one when we were talking about the peak height as I was comparing models of drivers that he had. We will look at peak height. Natural one if you're comparing golf clubs. Club speed, ball speed. There's nothing calibrated between this club and that launch monitor. So club speed, I don't always go off. Quite often when I talk to people about this, they're like, oh, my club speed is X. Okay, but is your club calibrated to the device? Because if not, it's not a true number. Whereas ball speed is more of an accurate number that you can take away and you can work on. Plus, the only time that the club speed really comes in, when Dean Wilson was using the persimmon driver, you could see the club speed went down because of the weight and the length of the golf club. But really club speed, it's not gonna move much between two clubs unless the aero on one, like a persimmon versus a sim two, it, it's, there's a huge difference. So ball speed is more important to me, which is how quickly the ball comes off the blade. Model of golf ball will impact that massively. Attack angle and club path. The two last parts I'm gonna talk about. And as I've touched on, you can go into any launch monitor. There are many others, swing plane, swing direction, the low point of the golf club, side total, the last piece of data, last where it caught that golf ball. There's a lot of stuff, but I tend to bring it down in my fitting style, just to 10 points, which I think is enough. That's what we're touching on here. An attack angle and club path. Unless a player's getting something funky going on, this one I would look at for sure, like horizontal swing plane, for example. I would look at that if a player had something funky going on and how they are delivering the club can often be looked at with horizontal swing plane. But again, to keep it where we can all understand it so we can follow along, attack angle is the club pretty much from halfway down through to impact. This is a six iron. It pinched out there with a bit of a flight on it. I'm a bit of a trapper anyway down seven degrees so that club is coming down seven and then the path on that last shot super efficient for me was minus 0.4 so whenever you have a minus number it means the club is coming if the ball to target line which you can see here would be there and you've got a minus number it means the club is moving that way and a positive number would mean the club is moving along my alignment stick. And that is the key tip on this that I just said to you guys, I'm very happy with minus 0.4. That's very neutral for me. Quite often I get a little bit steep. When you do this, when you practice, I appreciate all these things are just knowledge for watching my videos, intel for watching the tour player fitting so you can follow along. However, if you know your path is off, get your alignment sticks. Go parallel left. I'm going to the street lamp, the lamp post, like I always do on this gym flick tee. And then put your other one down. And for me, it's just a marker to show me, and I've been hitting balls near the back end of it. But if I wanna feel a path that moves more to the right, you have to exaggerate it. So ball to target line would be that way. By having that alignment stick there, I can get the visual and get the feel of the club shallowing and moving that way, which then in turn gives me the minus 0.4 path. So go exaggerated on your feels. That's your tip here this week. Go exaggerated on your feels whenever you want to move anything. Any questions you guys have got about those 10 tiles that I tend to go for when it comes to hitting golf shots, 
fire them in the comments below. There's no question that is too stupid when it comes to this. There's a lot of information in these machines. There's a lot of stuff that golf coaches, some of the best in the game talk about and they breeze over too quickly. I've tried to give you my thinking as to why I use those 10, what I'm looking for with these great players, what's the relevance of it and how I can keep their headspace clear so they can go out and perform at their A plus best. They don't need to know everything about these golf clubs at the end of the day, but they do have an amount of knowledge that they know so I need to work with that in order to get the optimum ball flight. As always, subscribe, follow, comments are welcome. Anything you guys wanna know, I put a video up once every Tour Truck Tuesday. Hopefully that helps you enjoy some of these Tour Player fittings if I get to do a few more, if it's something you like. As we go on, let me know and good luck as always. You're on path to being better golfers, I know you are, because some of the feedback has been excellent and I do read all the comments, so keep it coming. Good luck.